seven new spring tear tray DIYs for what I have in store for you today. They are all fun, easy, and budget friendly, which is my specialty. So if we haven't met, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. I found these little chicks at Hobby Lobby. They were other, there were other shapes in the set, but I thought that the chicks looked super cute and I painted the chicks yellow and I'm painting the eggshell white. And I'm showing you this part to show you that not all of my crafts start out the way they end up. I mean, no, they don't end up the way they start out. Anyway, I completely scrapped my original idea and instead I'm going in a different direction. So I carefully paint over the letters that I had just drawn on to prep for my new idea. My new plan was to create like a little sign that spelled out Easter. So I made some vinyl letters using my Cricut and I transferred them all. That all went fine, but to be honest, the letters are small and it's hard to see. And I'm not sure how I can improve that other than using like larger wood pieces or different font, probably a different font. To finish this off, I took a jumbo craft stick that I got from Lowe's for like 98 cents and I cut it to the size of the chicks, meaning the length of them, like if I put them side by side, I then glued those down and added a tower tumbling block to the back so that it could easily stand on its own. Okay, I don't think I'm being super critical of my work when I say that all the, the chicks look cute. You can't really read the word Easter. I mean, <laughs> look, I mean, I know it's there, so I know what it says, but I like it better than how the original idea was turning out, so there's that. I have made some really great friends here in the DIY YouTube community, and today, this video is part of a playlist with three of them. You know that I'll have the list, uh, the links to their channels and the playlist below, but I wanted to give a shout out to Crafty Lini, a perfect place to start, and the rest of Willow for collaborating with me today. Check out the playlist and give those amazing gals a follow. You won't be sorry. I had started to do a faux wood stack, book stack, with the same saying that it's going to be on another DOI, but I remembered that I had this decal, so I'm making this version instead. So see, Y'all just don't know what goes on behind the scenes in the life of a YouTuber. So I'm staining the frame of this chalkboard sign with Waverly Wax in the color Antique and I'm wiping off the excess with a damp cloth. Now I am applying the decal and positioning it towards the top so I can leave some room at the bottom. Sometimes the decal transfers easily and sometimes you have to work with it a little bit. I'm painting both bunnies with folk art paint in the color Barely Pink. It seems to be my go-to color this year, it seems. Anyways, I'm painting one side of one bunny, and when I paint the other, I flip it so the bunny is facing in the opposite direction. The carrot is pretty simple. I'm just taking an orange paint pen for the bottom half of the carrot, and then the top, I'm using two different green colored paint pens. Then I'm just hot gluing on the carrot and then the two bunnies. This turned out super cute, y'all. I love the pale pink combined with the black, white, and brown. I just think it looks so cute. I found this little sign at Dollar Tree and I thought it would work great for DIY number three. And I began painting the inside of the sign with folk art paint in the color Adirondack. 
<laughs> when I am almost done, I realized I could have just removed the sign. Oh well. <laughs> but then I noticed that the paint had caused the paper to kind of mess up. And you know when it gets wet like that, it starts to lift. Anyway, I just start to peel the paper away and I get off as much as I can. And then I use a wet cloth to remove the rest. And now it's ready for painting and I'm using folk art, folk art paint in the color um, Parisian Gray. It's time to add the decals. Sometimes when you're trying to get the vinyl to transfer to the transfer tape, it helps if you burnish it from the back. Just a little tip for y'all. Although it looks like I'm still on the struggle bus here with this one. I got it transferred and now I am just painting this little wooden bunny white. And I'm using that Adirondack. There I said it. <laughs> I'm going to hot glue the bunny towards the top of the sign on the right. Then you just place that back into the frame and voila you have a really cute sign that would look great on a coffee bar or on a tear tray and I love that it's neutral but you could easily paint the frame or the bunny to kind of give it a pop of color I'm taking this bunny wood piece that I purchased from Dollar Tree and staining it with Waverly Wax in the color antique. Now here's a tip for y'all. With Dollar Tree wood pieces, it's always a good idea to give it a good sanding. And to apply the wax, I usually pour or paint it on and then take a damp rag and wipe off the excess. And on the left, you're gonna see a bunny face decal I made using my Cricut, and I'm just using the lower half of that face. I wanted to add a little flower to the corner because my sister had shown me a cute DIY someone had made and I was trying to recreate it. So the wood flower came in a pack of little wood pieces from Hobby Lobby and I'm just using paint pens to give it some color. Next, I'm going to position the decal and the flower and I'm just trying to see where everything will fit and I'm making sure I like how it looks. I transfer the decal and then I hot glue the flower on it and that's it. Here's how it turns out. I or turned out. I think it looks sweet. But tell me, do you think that face should be in black vinyl or do you think it would look better in white vinyl? I I'm going back and forth. Of course I chose black, but I started thinking Maybe I should have used white. Anyway, this piece is part of a set. The outer box I will save for another project, but the inside I'm using for DIY number five. I'm painting it with folk art paint in the color Adirondack. I hate saying that word now. <laughs> now it is time to make the ears. And at first I thought to use the handles from like Dollar Tree gift bags, but then I saw this twine covered wire and I thought well that's gonna work and so I twisted it and shaped it and snipped it and I think it turned out great. I then hot glued the bunny ears to the top of the box and I took these yellow florals that I got from Dollar Tree and started hot gluing the flowers around the base of the ears. Now while these flowers are cute they have some sort of dusty stuff on them like kind of like they're flocked or something. Anyways it gets a little bit messy but it's not too bad. And what is a bunny without a tail? So since this box has a hole in it, I'm just using this jumbo pom-pom ball that I got from Dollar Tree last year. They had them this year too. And I'm gluing it on to cover the hole. And I probably should have added the face on first. It would have made things easier, but I just took a black paint pen and some folk art paint in the color Barely Pink to create a face for this bunny. I think this turned out so sweet and it's easy to create and it's gonna look great on a tiered tray.
I have a Facebook group called Crafty DIYs on a Budget, and so many in there are already posting and sharing their DIYs. So if you want to join, click the link in my description box below. For DIY number six, I'm using another inside of a box or a drawer set, and I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but I've stained it with Waverly Wax in the color Antique, and I've printed out this sweet little scene on just regular printer paper, and I'm using a glue stick to glue it on. And then I'm going to use my finger sander to sand off the excess paper. And if you watched my channel before, you know I'm a fan of distressing ink, and I'm using that to add some character around the edges of this picture. Simple, easy, rustic, and oh so cute. I love the vintage rustic vibe of this, and y'all, anyone can do this. Let me know if you try something similar. Project number seven is a quick one. I had these two pieces of scrap wood and I painted them white and I painted one with the Parisian gray and one with barely pink. And as you can see, I did not go all the way to the edge. I cut out a simple decal using my Cricut, and as I've said before, you could use stickers or hand letter if you don't have a Cricut. You really don't have to have a Cricut to create cute and budget-friendly things for your home. And I'd just also like to say, if you haven't already, I really would love it if you would subscribe to my channel, and while you're at it, if you would hit that bell so YouTube can notify you every time I share something new. I really, really love how this one turned out. I like that the colors don't go all the way to the edge, so it creates kind of like a frame effect, and I love it so much. I think I want to try and create it using white vinyl. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank y'all so much for watching my video today. I really do appreciate it. If you liked what you saw, to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.